work with color in InDesign, the main tool that you use is actually the color panel. And your color panel is going to be located in your panels bin over here on the right side of your screen. And it says color. So you could just go ahead and click on that. And here in the color panel, you have a CMYK, which is the color mode. And what does that mean? Well, if we come down here, you will see that this is your CMYK spectrum. And these are all the different colors you can choose from. So if you could just kind of click with your eyedropper close to the color you want, you now get your CMYK percentages, which the percentages are over here. And that's showing you that that particular green color is going to be a cyan 58, a magenta 0, a yellow 87, and a black, the K is black, 0. And to change this color, all you have to do is either come back down here to your dropper and pick a different color, or if you want, you can come back and mess with your sliders and change how much cyan, magenta, yellow, and black is in it. And as you move these sliders around, you can see that it drastically starts altering the color. Or if you want a more subtle effect, you keep it very close to where the settings were originally. And you just move slightly, maybe one slider, if you want to just slightly adjust how much magenta is in it. Or you can come up here to your percentages and just directly change your percentage. So just a couple of other things about the color swatch panel. Over here in this corner, you have this white box with a red line through it. This is actually what you pick when you want no color. So if you were selected on an object, like a rectangle, and you wanted that rectangle to be filled with no color, instead of this green color, which will be automatic when you're in the color panel, that's telling your fill color to fill with that particular color. If you want it changed to nothing, you can just go ahead and click on that. Now you have a transparent empty box. So that's your none selection in your color panel. Additionally, on this side, you have white and black. And this is, you can go ahead and pick a white up top, or you can pick a black down there. So you have the options for none, white, and black on either side, right and left, of your color spectrum and then in the middle you have a rainbow that you can just use an eyedropper to select from and then use these sliders to sort of refine that color to get the perfect color that you want. And additionally when you're on this you see that this is filling in my rectangle that's because I'm now selecting the fill color but if I come up here and go and double click this brings you into the color picker and you can start to select your color there. But you can also do it in the color panel since you're now on the stroke. Just change that color and you can see that as you change your color in here it's affecting your stroke color. Now if you want to go back to your fill color, double click, make sure the color picker comes up and then you can actually pick your color directly through the color picker or once the computer knows that you're looking to change the fill color, the color swatch will go to that. Next we're going to go ahead and talk about swatches and the swatches panel is located directly below the color panel and you click on that and this is where your swatches come up and the standard swatches that come with InDesign are not super exciting they're just basic primary swatches but you can add swatches to InDesign pretty easily. Let's go ahead and let's double click and as you see we have this kind of ugly yellow color so let's go find something prettier. And once you have that color selected, you can click this button that says Add CMYK Swatch. And when you click on that, see that at the bottom, you've added this swatch to your swatches panel. And if we come back to our color picker and we change our color to something else, and we say Add CMYK Swatch, we've now added a second swatch to our panel. So now let's say OK. And now that you're back in your InDesign window, if you go ahead and add a couple more rectangles, you can actually easily just grab these rectangles with your selection tool and come down to your swatches. And that will, by clicking on that swatch, it will apply it to those rectangles directly. So you can pick that one. You can change your mind and go back to a nice blue that was in there and you just apply these colors directly by picking their swatch in the swatch panel. And this is very helpful if 
you're working on a document and you have a blue selected that you want to use throughout your document and you want it to be consistent. Instead of going into your color picker and trying to hit that blue every time by adding a color swatch, you can always go down and find the color that you're looking for. Now, up until this point, we've been working with swatches that were in the CMYK color mode, but you can actually change that if that's something that you want to do. Right here under your swatch options, you can choose different options. You have the color type and that's currently set to process, but you can also change it to spot color if that's something that you're looking to do. And you have your color mode right here, which you can change from CMYK to RGB or any of these other color modes if that's the space that you're working in. Now one of the nice things about working with InDesign is that you're not limited to just working with solid colors. You can also apply gradients to your objects. And all a gradient is is a graduation between two different colors or the same color. You can go from like a light blue to a dark blue and have it gradually change over the course of the object. And to create our gradient, we're gonna first make sure that our object is selected, and then we're gonna come up to Window on the menu bar, and then down to Color, and then Gradient. And this is going to bring up our gradient panel. And in here you have this little, it kind of looks like color spectrum selector that you had with your color panel, but it's different. This is showing you that if you were to apply this gradient right now, you would have white on this side and black on the other, and that you would fill it with a gradient that looks somewhat like this. And then your options for that gradient would be that you can have a linear, and that immediately applied it to your box. And linear is lines running this direction. Right now they're vertical, but if you change your angle, say 90, and now your lines are running horizontally across. Uh, you can reverse it and when you reverse the gradient that's going to put the black over here and the white over here which means the black will now be down there and the white will be on top. See what that looks like. Don't like that, put it back. And a radial gradient if you come down here it looks like that. It starts radiating from the center and works out to the outside of the object. And you can reverse that if you want the black in the center. So this is what a basic gradient looks like. Now this black and white gradient is nice and all, but it's a little bit boring. It would be nice if there was some color added. So what we're gonna do is we're actually going to go ahead and pull this gradient over to our panel bin. And since we have our color swatches panel open, we're gonna go down to the bottom of our color swatches. And down here you'll see different options that say show all swatches, show your color swatches, and then show gradient swatches. Well, we're going to go ahead and click on that, and right now we have none. Well, if we go up here to our options, you have the option to create a new color swatch, a new tint swatch, or right here, a new gradient swatch. So we're going to go ahead and create a new gradient swatch by clicking on that. And that's going to give us a dialog box again. And down here you see it says gradient ramp. Well, the gradient ramp is just how you tell in design the uh, specifications that you have for your gradient. And as you can see, it's currently radial and we're going white to black and right in the middle, it's going to switch colors. Well, that's pretty boring. So let's go ahead and let's make it linear. And over here, it, you've got the stop color and that's where you put in your colors. But right now we don't have any colors. So let's go ahead and click on one of these. And the second that you click on your little box here, you get the ability to change the color of this particular slider. So we can now pull it up to say a blue. And as you can see, now you're going from blue to black. Well, let's cut, and it's giving you a stop color in swatches. Well, we don't want it in swatches. Let's go back to CMYK so that we're consistent with the color space that this was in. And we're gonna go ahead and play around with this a little bit until we get a nice color. And that looks pretty good. And actually, instead of linear, let's go ahead and do a radial gradient. Now, the next thing that we can do, this is location 100%, but you can move around this location, which means that you'll have more green in the gradient and it will start transitioning to green faster. Or if you go that way, you can have more blue in the gradient and it will transition to green later. Let's just say we want just a little sh subtle shading of the green. So we're going to move our location way over there. 
And now we're going to go up to the top and we're going to rename it. Let's call it spring and then hit OK. And now you can see in your gradient panel or in your swatches panel that you have this new gradient listed. Additionally, because you had your box selected, it immediately applied it to that object. And now that you have this gradient selected, you can come over to that gradient tool and click on that. And now you can see that this gives you direct access to your gradient editing tool. So if you want to change the way it looks by changing how it slides from blue to green, you can easily do that by just changing the swatch directly in here. Finally, if you like the way this looks and you want to apply it again somewhere else in the document, say you want to come down here at the end of the chapter, you want to have a box and apply that gradient to it, come over to your swatches and just click on it and it automatically applies it to your object. And finally, let's say that that looks okay, but you actually want to have this filled in a solid color but you want the stroke to be in your gradient let's go ahead and make our stroke a little bit bigger say nine points and then come down here to your spring and now you see that you have a gradient stroke applied to your object